How to naturally dye with alder cones. Welcome to my channel Billy New. Today I'm going to be dyeing with alder cones. These little cones release a deep brown liquid when submerged in water and are often used in ink making but they're also apparently used to condition aquariums which I thought was quite interesting. But today I'm going to be dyeing a pair of linen overalls. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel Billy New. My name's Kaylee, and today I'm going to be dyeing with alder cones. Um, I collected some alder cones the other week, um, so I'm going to be using them to dye a custom order. So I thought today it might be quite a nice opportunity to take you guys through how I dye my garments, um, especially custom orders. Um, I get quite a lot of questions about um, whether I make the garment first or if I dye the fabric first and, and, and stuff like that. So I was going to talk you through a bit about how, how I go about it. So here are the overalls that I'm going to be dyeing today. They're a really special pair of overalls. They're made with a vintage linen fabric, which I absolutely love. They're also a custom pair. So I've got a really lovely customer who's let me, given me free reign to, to experiment with aldercones on her overalls. Um, the linen is just so gorgeous. It's got lots of hand lace details. So when they made the linen back in the day, it would have all been done by hand, which is for me makes it extra special. The weight and the quality of the linen is just something I love. It's really light and airy, and, but it's also got a lovely bounce and weight to it. I've also chosen the placement of the hand lace details to be around the legs and also on the pockets just because I think they look extra pretty on the pockets. So here you can see if I hold these overalls up to the light you can see the very special gorgeous textury grain of the linen fabric. As you can see these overalls haven't quite been finished properly yet. I haven't put any fastenings on them. This is the front. Um, I haven't tidied up the the threads but I have prepared them for being dyed so I've given them a really really thorough scour which is what you do to clean your fibres before you dye them and this is really important if you want to try and achieve a, an even colour over the whole garment or piece of fabric that you're dyeing. And I've also mordanted them as well so they've been had a really good mordant, a really good scour so they should be perfectly ready for dyeing. Um, the next step that I'm going to do is soak them for a couple of hours before I put them in the dye pot because that will also help with a with an even colour as well. So we found an amazing spot the other day. It was absolutely full of alder cones and we spent about 40 minutes I think collecting these ones. I feel like I've just got so much treasure. So alder cones should make a kind of browny colour. Quite often it has a, a silvery tint especially if you're dyeing silk or um, something with a, a sheen, sheen to it. it has this kind of like silvery shiny goldy metallic maybe is the right word. Um, tint to it um, but I'm hoping to get a nice brown brownie shade from these guys. As usual I'm not really one for measuring and weighing <laughs> so I'm just gonna put a really nice big amount in. Make sure the colour's nice and saturated. And the good thing about these ones is that I know I've got thousands more where they came from. So I'm not worried about running out. Mm, a bit more. Next step, I'm going to cover with water. I don't want to fill it too full because I need to strain all the cones out before I die. I 
and the water is, that's cold water and there's already loads of colour. So, I'll leave them to simmer for a little while. The elder cones have been simmering for about an hour, an hour and a half now, and the colour's looking really, really, um, really strong, so it's quite exciting. It's so dark. Okay. Oh no! Got my spoon in. my um, other pot for straining. <laughs> okay, so I didn't fill this up too, too much with water because I knew I was going to strain it. And I'm going to do that now. I feel like I'd be able to get another good um, extraction from these alder cones as well. Ooh. Is it all going to fit? I need an extra pot. We've got really nice strong liquid. Still got a couple of bits in it, but they'll be okay. I'm just gonna wipe up that mess. Voila. Okay. I'm just topping up with some extra water so that the when I put the fibre in it's got more more freedom to move around. It's still gonna be the same amount of dye in there, it's just gonna be more liquid. Right. So we've just stepped outside because it's nice and sunny out here, and I've added some more water to my pot, so there's lots of liquid in there for my fabric to move around. I've got my wet fibre here, my wet overalls, I've given them a squeeze. Uh, this water, the temperature of the water's cooled down a bit so I can put my hands in there now because I'm really gonna give this a good squeeze once it gets in, just to make sure that I get all the dye into all the creases of the fibre. Look at that. Ooh, so I'm just going to give it a squeeze. I like doing this because I feel like it really helps with an even colour and I do this when I'm mordant and, yeah, when I'm mordant as well, but with gloves on if I'm mordanting. And also if the, if the liquid's too hot, I put gloves on as well. So it's kind of gone yellow. <laughs> It's nice doing it outside actually. Take over the street. And I'll just keep stirring and squeezing and stirring for oops, I'm getting it on the wall. Um, a good 10-15 minutes solidly. And then I'll put it back on the heat and keep stirring as regularly as possible. All to try and get a super even colour. Mm. 
Looks a bit like coffee. Don't film me <laughs> carrying that. <sighs> Be careful of your backs, obviously. Okay, now I'm just going to heat this up again and stir for a long, long time. Been on for a couple of hours now simmering gently and the colour's looking quite nice um, kind of a kind of yellowy beigey colour I'm gonna um, am I gonna lift this up I'm gonna try and I'm gonna pour it into my big sieve so I've noticed straight away that there are some patches on here. And despite doing everything that I could with um, scouring and mordanting, there's still, for some reason, vintage puff fiber still has a tendency to have little splats, which actually can be quite pretty. You see? So this I think looks quite pretty. Hopefully the lady who has ordered this pair won't mind but yeah sometimes it just seems to be that way I'm not sure why maybe somebody used a product on on the the sheet or I don't know but there's something's touched this fabric which has made it take the color more than other places I'm not really sure what it is to be honest but it'd be good to know just giving it a quick rinse Just giving it a little rinse and then I'll put it in on the spin setting in my washing machine to get out the excess um, liquid and then tomorrow we'll see how it looks. to get rid of uh, spun. So today I'm going to show you the results of the overalls that I dyed yesterday with aldicone. Aldicones, lots of them. Um, it's kind of an interesting result. It's a classic example of natural dyes showing you that they're alive and they've got their own character and personality. So I was really aiming for a, an, a uniform colour on these overalls because that's what my customer asked for. Um, and despite doing everything in my power, I still ended up with some marks on the overalls, which actually I'm really loving now. Yesterday I thought that it might have been because I was using vintage fabric um, because sometimes when you use vintage fabric they could have touched something that you can't see or I don't know but sometimes marks come up on the vintage fabrics anyway even when you've scoured them but today I'm not so sure I actually think it looks like the Aldergones just had a party <laughs> like they just did what they wanted to do um, and I quite like it because if it's um, just one spot, sometimes it can just look a bit out of place, but they've kind of done it all over the overalls. They've kind of splashed themselves all over the overalls. And I really like them. I hope that my customer is going to like them too. If she doesn't, then I'll have to figure something out. But I just think they're quite subtle and quite gorgeous. So also, interestingly, the Aldercone bath, dye bath, was so dark and so deep, but actually the final colour is quite, um, it's kind of buttery, kind of a bit lighter than I was expecting, but it's really 
you can imagine if this was on a silk like I said before it would be really shiny and gold like thanks for watching guys I hope you enjoyed this video and seeing the process of how I go about dyeing my custom overalls don't forget we've got some ebooks available they should be below, available below this video um, if you're interested in getting started in natural dyes they're quite a nice little aid also check out our website billynew.com where you can buy some of my products and my instagram billynewapparel and have a lovely day <laughs>